Inherited disorders. If a mutation occurs in a sex cell, then that mutation can be passed down to offspring. Genetic disorders can exist in every type of plant and animal. There are thousands of genetic disorders in humans alone. Some of these disorders are inherited as dominant or recessive traits controlled by a single gene. All of these disorders show simple inheritance patterns, just like the traits in Mendel's pea plants. Recessive disorders. Many genetic disorders are inherited in a recessive manner. Recessively inherited disorders show up only in individuals homozygous for the allele. Carriers are heterozygous individuals who carry the recessive allele but are phenotypically normal. These recessively inherited disorders range in severity from relatively mild to life-threatening. An example of a recessive disorder that is relatively mild is albinism, in which there is a lack of pigmentation in the skin. An example of a life-threatening disorder is cystic fibrosis, CF, which involves excessive secretion of a very thick mucus from the lungs, pancreas, and other organs. Because of the mucus, it is very hard to breathe, and it also allows germs to thrive in affected organs, which could lead to respiratory failure and liver disease. Life expectancy for people with CF is 41 years. Due to medicine and treatments, this has increased from 60 years ago, when children with CF did not live past five years old. So let's look at what happens when we cross two people, so two gametes, one egg, and one sperm that are heterozygous dominant, or both carriers for this recessive allele. Using Mendel's laws, we can predict the percentage of affected children likely to result from parents that are each a carrier for the disease. So in our cross, we get one homozygous dominant offspring that will be normal, two that will be carriers of the recessive allele, and one in four will be affected with whatever inherited disorder this represents. Genotypically, each child has a 25% chance of exhibiting the particular disorder because one in four, 25% here is affected. A 50% chance of being a carrier, so two of these four are carriers, and a 25% chance of being genetically normal. This is a ratio of one to two to one. Phenotypically, each child has a 75% chance of not exhibiting the disorder, or three to one. Matings between close relatives can increase the probability of the appearance of a genetic disease. Such matings are called consanguineous matings or inbreeding. Methemoglobinemia is a recessive disorder characterized by the presence of a higher than normal level of a chemical that blocks oxygen absorption to red blood cells, causing tissues to turn blue. The Fugates of Hazard, Kentucky were a group of people who carried the gene for this recessive disorder. Additionally, they had many numerous consanguineous mar marriages, resulting in many children who were tinted blue. Here are some other examples of recessive disorders. Phenylketonuria, PKU, were an accumulation of the amino acid phenylalanine in the blood, which can lead to developmental and or intellectual disabilities. Sickle cell disease, where abnormal hemoglobin leads to abnormally shaped red blood cells and can damage many tissues. And Tay-Sachs disease, accumulation of lipid or fat in brain cells, leading to developmental and or intellectual disabilities, blindness, and death in early childhood. Dominant disorders. Some human disorders are due to dominant alleles. One example is a chondroplasia, a form of dwarfism that is lethal when homozygous for the dominant allele. People who survive the disease are heterozygous for the allele. Consider the Punnett square with two heterozygous parents, where the capital A is the dominant allele and lowercase a is the recessive allele. 
If we cross them, we see that the parents are affected by the disorder. The disease is fatal to the homozygous dominant child. Two children are affected by the disorder, those that are heterozygous dominant. And one child, this homozygous recessive, is not affected. The genotypic ratio here, 1 to 2 to 1. The phenotypic ratio, 3 to 1. So three who are not who are affected. Let's see, so these three are affected to one child who is not. What if one parent is heterozygous, as shown here, and the other is homozygous for this disorder? So here's the resulting generation. One parent is affected by the disorder, this heterozygous dominant, and the other is not. What results is two children who are affected and two who are not. So the genotypic ratio is one to one and the phenotypic ratio is one to one. This is a deviation from expected ratios. Huntington's disease is a dominant degenerative disease of the nervous system. The disease has no obvious phenotypic effects until about 35 to 40 years of age. This is beneficial for the genes as by that point, most people with the disease will have unknowingly passed the genes on to their offspring. But it is not beneficial for the person who has it or for the human population. People with the disease can pass it on to their children before they even know they have it. In humans and other animals, as well as some plants, there's a chromosomal basis of sex determination. An organism's sex is an inherited phenotypic character determined by the presence or absence of certain chromosomes. In fruit flies and in humans, the presence of two X chromosomes determines female characteristics. Because only the male parent has two different sex chromosomes, X and Y, the male parent determines the sex of each offspring. A single gene on the Y chromosome induces the development of male characteristics. If this gene is missing or mutated, the individual develops female characteristics. In some species, such as some insects, birds, amphibians, reptiles, and plants, the sex chromosomes are Z and W. Two Zs make a male, ZW makes a female, and the female parent's egg determines the sex of the offspring. The XO system is where there is only one sex chromosome, X. An organism with one X chromosome is male, and a female has two X chromosomes. Grasshoppers, roaches, and other insects have this system. The haploid diploid system is when there are no sex chromosomes. Fertilized eggs develop into females and unfertilized eggs develop into males. Honeybees follow this system. The colony is mostly female workers which come from fertilized eggs. The queen will lay only a small amount of eggs that are not fertilized. They develop into drones whose only function is to mate with the queen to continue the colony. Sex-linked inheritance. The sex chromosomes have genes for many characteristics unrelated to sex. A gene located on either sex chromosome is called a sex-linked gene. Sex-linked inheritance is where the phenotypes of sex-linked alleles are genetically linked to the sex of the individual. Sex-linked genes are represented by superscripts on X and Y. Many sex-linked disorders are located on the X chromosome. Typically, these disorders are inherited through the mother as she gives an X chromosome to any child she has. Sex-linked disorders show up in males more often than females because they only have one copy of an X chromosome. They don't have another copy that would have a dominant allele to counteract the disorder. Hemophilia is a sex-linked recessive human disorder where a person's blood doesn't clot. This can be life-threatening during even small cuts. The last royal house of Russia, the Romanovs, suffered from this disease in the early 20th century. 
There are two genes on the X chromosome that when either one is mutated, it causes hemophilia. Choose one gene where H is normal, capital H is normal, and lowercase h denotes the gene that prevents the blood from clotting properly, causing the disease. Create a Punnett square with a heterozygous female represented as X dominant, X recessive, so heterozygous, and a hemizygous male without the disease. So X dominant would be no disease and then Y. A hemizygous gene is one that has no allele counterpart or is a single copy. A gene that has a gene that had one of its two alleles deleted or the X and Y genes in a male as a male only has one of each. So the Punnett square uses the X and Y alleles. So here's the male normal, so dominant for um, the gene with a superscript so specifying the hemophilia or the normal state. Then the female XX is a carrier, so heterozygous. Here are the offspring. The first will be a female homozygous dominant. This will be a male normal. And then we have a female heterozygous dominant and a male recessive. The son with the genotype, the dominant genotype, will not have hemophilia, right? But the son with this single recessive allele will have hemophilia as it doesn't have a normal X allele. Since the X lowercase h is recessive, since the hemophilia is recessive, the daughters will not have hemophilia because they have a dominant allele. However, this daughter will carry the gene to the next generation. X-linked disorders. X-linked disorders can be caused by a dominant or a recessive allele on the X chromosome in humans. Those created by a dominant allele are Rett syndrome, a neurological disorder of the brain, vitamin D resistance, resulting in a bone deformity, and fragile X syndrome, resulting in learning disabilities. Recessive alleles are red-green color blindness, hemophilia, which we just discussed, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, which is muscle weakness and degeneration, Hunter's syndrome, where the body cannot break down sugar molecules, juvenile gout, resulting in joint pain and swelling, and hereditary nephritis, resulting in kidney inflammation, hearing loss, and eye abnormalities. Bar bodies. Bar bodies are condensed, deactivated X chromosomes that appear like small dark spots when stained with nuclear dye in female cell nuclei. You can see it here. Females have two X chromosomes and males have one X chromosome. To ensure that both female and male gene expression that depend on the X chromosome are equal, one of the female's X chromosomes is deactivated early in development.